Hi guys, my name is Gia and I'm a vegan bodybuilder. <laughs> Welcome. I post YouTube videos answering questions that people have for me usually on Instagram, Facebook, or Snapchat. My Facebook account predominantly focuses on my food and my nutrition while Instagram focuses on a bunch of stuff including uh, my works out my workouts and my lifts. Um, this particular video is going to show you the recipe of a lemon bread that I created. I have cravings <laughs> and I like to satisfy them. And the majority of the time when I have cravings, or a lot of the times when I have cravings, I cook them myself and I just whip something up in the kitchen just because I can. <laughs> so hopefully this lemon bread is um, yummy for you and that you give it a try. If you do give it a try, let me know how you switch it up, how you change it up, what else I should give a whirl um, by putting it in the comments below. Um, yeah, and if you guys have any tips for me on how to better make these recipe videos, let me know in the comments below. Thanks guys. Okay, I'm going to try to explain the ingredients that I use. Keep in mind guys, the same ingredients even from different brands can react differently, work differently, etc. So I'll um, let you know why I use the ones that I use. Um, sometimes I pick it for a purpose and sometimes I just pick it because I do. <laughs> okay, so this lemon bread that I have, by the way guys, I'll show, share with you the macros right now. This entire recipe is a small, it's a small loaf. Um, it has 48 grams of protein. 33.4 grams of carbs and 7.5 grams of fat. I don't know if that'll show you. I am going to look at my phone as I do this, so hopefully it's not too bad. Um, first things first, wheat gluten. I start out with a half a cup of wheat gluten. And if, for those not familiar, it's the way that I get the majority of my protein, guys. Wheat gluten is the gluten straight up from wheat. It is not gluten-free, it is wheat gluten. But the reason I like wheat gluten, guys, is because it is super hefty in protein, super low in carbs, and super low in fat, all depending on how you cook it. <laughs> so with this recipe, um, you'll actually have, still have uh, pretty low fat. This is a Great River brand, by the way. I get it off of Amazon only because um, I tend to buy more wheat gluten, um, and so I get it in bulk from Amazon. So I start off with half a cup of the also known as vital wheat gluten. This is what it looks like. Let me put my phone on silent real quick, guys. Um, so half a cup of wheat gluten. And then I will add 20 grams of cornmeal. Uh, I just picked up this cornmeal from a Russian supermarket. Um, it looked like it was great quality. I don't really know how to explain, like, what I was looking for, but it, was, it didn't look too... Um, too grainy, it looked a little bit smooth, um, and it had a nice color to it. So I actually have my weighing scale here. Let me try to move this camera. Okay. Uh, can you guys see that? So I have my weighing scale. I put my bowl in it that has a wheat gluten. I've gone ahead and teared it so you can see that the scale now says zero. Can you see that? It says zero. And I'm going to put in 20 grams of cornmeal into there. And the reason I'm adding cornmeal into this guys is because wheat gluten itself is a really tough uh, texture. It is really gummy. It is really um, smooshy, <laughs> like hard to pull apart. And the cornmeal is just there to break up um, to break that up so that it isn't so gummy in texture. So I'm going to go ahead and mix that around. And then the next thing I have on here, I added a quarter of a teaspoon of baking powder. This is the one that I have. I think it's pretty old, but it still works, so I am using it. So that's a quarter of a teaspoon. I am having a hard time. Okay, let's do this. Okay. <laughs> okay, a quarter of a teaspoon of baking powder, and then I am going to do what do I want to do next. I I'm also going to put um, shredded coconut. 
This is Bob's Red Mill. I love Bob's for a lot of different things that they have there, but Bob's Red Mill Shredded Coconut. I actually just have had this in the pantry for quite some time. This is the unsweetened version. The only reason I'm putting this in is because I want texture. Um, so when, when I cook the bread later and you see the texture, you'll, you'll see kind of what I mean. I'm doing six grams of this. And then I'm going to mix that up. While I mix that up, I'm going to figure out which other ingredient I want to put in. Tip for you guys, usually the way it works is when you're cooking and you're baking, put your dry ingredients together so that you can mix them evenly first before you add your liquids in. Okay, I am going to add Dijon mustard. The reason I add Dijon mustard, I add it also in my pretzel recipe that I'll link down below. Um, the Dijon mustard is just another way to break it up, break up that wheat gluten so that it is not so tough and so gummy. Um, the mustard that I'm using purposely has the seeds. Um, the one that I like, guys, is from Trader Joe's. The reason I like the Trader Joe's one is because it, uh, the flavor is not so strong, so you actually can't taste it, at least I can't taste it, um, when I am uh, adding it into my breads and whatnot. So here's how's, how it's looking so far. Um, I like to add the Dijon mustard in now because it just helps kind of break up that all of those uh, dry ingredients and starts to kind of incorporate the mustard seeds into it without getting it clumped into one particular spot, if that makes sense. Okay, uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is I am making this thing sweet by using Maple Groves Farm sugar-free syrup. Now, I hate to actually recommend these kind of things because they're not the healthiest for you. Artificial sweeteners, you'll usually see me using stevia, but Maple syrup, sugar-free, uh, it's just good. <laughs> I mean, tastes good. I got this from um, Walmart, and the reason I like this one, one, it's because it's cheaper, but two, because um, I think they um, they actually add a little bit more water So than ones that I say, for example, find at Whole Foods, um, because the carbs are just like three grams lower on this one than the one that I found at Whole Foods. Um, I haven't compared, I'll be very honest, I haven't compared the ingredient list between the Whole Foods one and this one. And when I do, and I find that the ingredients of the Whole Foods one is better, I'll probably switch to that one. But I'm going to finish up what I have in here versus what I have in here. Um, so I have 78 grams of uh, maple sugar, maple, uh, maple, sugar-free maple syrup. 78 grams, I think, was about one-fourth and one-eighth cup, um, but just for the sake of being exact, um, for you guys, I'm going to go ahead and just add it in as grams. So I'm going to finish this guy off, and that is 61. You go in the recycle bin, my friend, and make sure this lid is tight. 79 grams, close enough. And then now what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to go ahead and just mix this up. Um, as you can see, it's starting to mix, uh, and it's still pretty dry. Um, I do have 100 grams of water that I'm going to add in, but I'm going to, I may not use the whole thing, or I may, I don't know. But to make this a lemon bread, the only thing I'm actually using is lemon extract. I believe I got this from Whole Foods. When it comes to extracts, I'm very finicky about extracts. I think they should be very good extracts, otherwise they just taste like chemicals. If I had actual lemons with me, I would take the rind and actually grate some of the rind into here. But I did, of the lemon extract, I did a quarter teaspoon, or half of a teaspoon. So I'm going to go ahead and just add that in here. And I'm going to sprinkle it around because you don't want it saturated in one spot. And you guys can choose to add more or less depending on how much you pizzazz flavor you want. <laughs> um, 
but as you can see, it's already pretty thick. I'm going to move the camera so you guys can see this better. Give me a second here. So you guys can see that it's still pretty dry there, right? Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that 100 grams of water that I had. Let me close up my lemon extract really quickly. And I'm going to start just pouring it in. Uh, I am going to take the spoon away. And I'm going to use my clean hands. I have washed my hands. They are clean. And I'm going to start massaging this in. The reason being is it's because it's already pretty tough. Okay. This is not going to look fun for a lot of people. But such is life. Sometimes. You have to do the unfun things to get the funness in it, out of it. <laughs> so as you guys can see, I'm just kind of smooshing it through my fingers to make sure that it's well incorporated. You know, that doesn't look fun, but if you, you bake and you cook, then you know it's kind of just part of the process. When you let it sit, wheat gluten, it does tend to absorb and um, get a little bit stiffer. Also, because I have cornmeal in here, it'll start to absorb some of the liquids as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and add, let's get crazy and let's add the rest of the 100 grams. Uh-oh, spaghetti -o. Let's see what that does. But I am going to make sure that I incorporate it all really well and make sure that it's even. And before I put it into my um, baking thing, I'll let it sit for a little bit just for the cornmeal to absorb the water, the gluten to absorb the water, and all that goodness to just kind of come together. Um, I am one of those people that will try the raw version out first before I cook it so that I know if I need to modify anything. I am sort of tempted to add a little bit more of lemon extract because I can. If you are going to add lemon extract, on the fly, so use a measuring spoon, even though you don't know how much you're gonna put, just because if you accidentally douse too much, whew, it is over, my friend, it is over. Oh, and I recently got some new vanilla extract that I'm excited to use, but I won't use that for now. Okay. So you guys can see, right, what that kind of looks like. Looks gross? Yes, it does. Okay, cool. So I'm going to let that sit. I'm going to wash my hands and I'll show you guys how I prepared my pan. Hi, it's me again. I'm preheating my oven to 375 degrees. I'm going to cook it for 30 minutes. I used my small toaster oven in this scenario last time I made it. So I'm, that's what I'm doing just for the sake of continuity, consistency for you guys. Now, this is where I'm going to put um, this batter dough thing in. I did line it with parchment paper because I didn't feel like dealing with stickiness, but I am also going to take just a smidge of avocado oil to make sure that it doesn't stick at all because I don't feel like dealing with that. I'm just rubbing that in there. Okay, so let's take a look at this batter. As you guys can see, I think you can see, it's settled a bit more. So now it's a little bit more cohesive, a little bit more put together. You can see I can just kind of pick it up, right? Plop. All right. I'm going to go ahead and place that puppy in here. Um, and what I did, guys, is parchment paper. Make sure to cut the corners so that you can fold it more easily into the um, baking pan itself baking bowl. I don't know what this is. So I'm just going to go ahead and plop this whole thing in there. And I'm going to try to get it to distribute evenly out to the sides as much as possible. I'm smushing it out to the edges only because edges tend to not rise as much as the stuff in the middle. So if you leave it alone and you don't smush it to the edges, you'll have a puffy middle and um, the things on the, on the sides will have stayed lower, um, much lower than the the rest of the, the loaf. So I'm going to go ahead and let that sit until the 
uh, until the oven is ready. All right, my oven has just dinged me and told me that it's ready, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this guy inside. I'm gonna put this tray at the lower level. Don't look at how dirty it is inside. I use my little toaster oven a ton. And I'm gonna push it towards the back because the back tends to be hotter than the front. 30 minutes, here we go. All right, guys, so the timer just went off. Look at that baby. Look at that baby. Look at that baby. Alright guys, so I've let it rest for maybe about five minutes and let's go ahead and figure out how this thing turned out. The great thing about parchment paper guys is you can just take the corners. Can you see that? You just take the corners and take it out of there. <laughs> After you rip it. And let's see. So this is the lemon bread. Ooh, it's still hot. As you can still see, it's as you can see, it's pretty hefty. Hot, 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 hot. And let's go ahead and cut into this baby. Ooh. You can see the coconut bits, the mustard seeds, the pockets of air. It's nice and squishy. I would probably let it rest for a little bit longer or maybe have baked it a little bit longer because the inside is still a little bit wet. I bet that if I baked it for five more minutes and then let it rest for a little bit longer, the inside would be perfect. But let's see. Oh, it's so hot. Let's see how easy. Ah. It is to break apart. So that's pretty easy to break apart. If this wasn't mixed in with cornmeal and mustard seed, guys, wheat gluten itself is really hard to break apart. So that's what that looks like. Let's see how it tastes. It's pretty good in my opinion. <laughs> if I wanted to make it more devilish, I would probably put like um, coconut oil in it. Or coconut milk in it. <laughs> I love coconut. <laughs> Alright guys. Um, anyways, I hope you try this out. Um, like I said, it is still a little bit moist inside, um, so maybe let yours rest a little bit longer. Maybe cook it for a little bit longer. Um, it's not too lemony in my opinion. If you do have actual lemons at home, grind that skin up um, and put that zest in, in here. I think it'll be amazing. Uh, if you do try it out, let me know how it goes. Put it in the comments below. If you try any different versions, let me know. I'd love to hear what you think and uh, what you try out. Um, if this kind of information is helpful for you guys, these kind of tutorials are helpful for you, let me know by giving this video a thumbs up, like up, boo -boo -boo, up, up. If you want to see more content from this mug, hit the subscribe button. There's a notification bell somewhere. Ding, 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 ding. I don't know where it is, but you can click it. All right, guys. Um, well, I hope that was helpful. That's it. Have a great day. See ya. <laughs>